you can start setting up. Uh, and just a reminder that if people have more questions, they can use the Slack channel. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, good, okay. Uh, so for the second talk today, we are very happy to have Elon Yogev, <laughs> who is going to talk about the adversarial robustness of uh, sampling. Okay, hi, thank you, Merav. Thank you for the organizers. Uh, this is great. This is my first uh, hug. Um, this is a joint work with uh, Omri Ben Eliezer about the adversarial robustness of sampling. So I'm going to tell you about this. The first part, we're going to talk generally about adversarial robustness. This is, I think, important even regardless of sampling. And then in the second part, uh, we'll connect this back to sampling. Oh, my laser pointer should work. OK. So the, I want to start with adversarial streaming algorithms. So what are the classical streaming algorithms? These, are, these come to model cases where you have a very large uh, data set. So you could think of uh, real-time real data strings, such as uh, internet traffic. Think of a router that is getting millions of packets a second, and he wants to perform some analysis, financial transactions, and many more. Uh, it's also very good for one-pass uh, database algorithms, where you have this huge database, and you have an algorithm that just reads the entire thing from left to right. Uh, using a very small amount of memory. So we have some continuous stream and we have this streaming algorithm that stores a small amount of memory and, and does some processing. Uh, more specifically, we're also going to talk about tracking algorithms. So if I have some goal, I want to compute some function f of the data and I'm going to have some error parameter. Elements appear one at a time. And what a tracking algorithm does, it doesn't output the right output at the end of the stream, okay? Uh, but for every timestamp t, he outputs rt, where rt with high probability is going to be close to the true value f of xt, where xt is just the stream up to time t. Okay, so we just want to be approximately correct for every timestamp. So these are tracking streaming algorithms. And just to see this in action, uh, we have some a source of data. So we have some XT that goes to the streaming algorithm. The streaming algorithm does some processing, stores some small state, and then publishes this output RT to the world. And this is important that this is to the world. We'll talk about this uh, just in a second. And the next step, we have XT plus one. Again, some processing and update to some small state. And again, we publish RT plus one. So the classical literature about streaming algorithms is as follows. The, di the data is fixed before the algorithm starts, and then the analysis is performed over the randomness of the streaming algorithm. And in particular, future data items do not depend on previous values RT. So if we go back to the picture, there is no connection back from the world that got this value RT to this database that contains the stream of elements. This might not be realist realistic in many different scenarios. So you can think again of a network. If you have some router that makes decisions according to some statistic that he computes, then of course these decisions that he makes are observable by uh, uh, other computers in the network and will affect their decision. You can think of an online store like Amazon that analyzes the, the stream of clicks and then uh, decides what the ads to put. And of course, your clicks are <laughs> as per, like as designed are a function of uh, which ads are displayed. You can also think there were cases where two competing uh, uh, stock trading companies uh, actually just maliciously purchased and sell the uh, uh, stocks just to fool the other company's algorithm. And just lastly, even in, there are some cases, there are some uh, cases where even for a classical uh, analysis where there's no uh, adaptivity or adversary, you still fall in the analysis, you need a stronger object, you need something which, uh, where, where this doesn't hold. Okay. 
So this brings us to define adversarial, adversarial streams. So we have an adversary who controls the streams of the updates. So he sees RT and then he gets to choose uh, XT plus one. And there are no guarantees for streaming algorithms in this case. And not only that there are no guarantees, we actually have example of harmful adversaries. So what would be the model of an adversarially robust streaming algorithm? Now we have an adversary that uh, decides on the elements of the stream. So he sends X1, the first one, he has no adaptivity. The streaming algorithm does the processing, stores some small state and sends back to the adversary R1. Now the adversary has R1, he can think and make an adaptive step to choose the next element of the stream, X2. Again, some processing, we get back R2. And now at the next step, the adversary can choose uh, according to R1 and R2, he can choose the next element R3 and so on. So the goal of the adversary is to make the algorithm mistake at some time, time stamp T, okay? Uh, um, uh, should be not, uh, RT is not gonna be epsilon, sorry for the mistake, close to, to F at some uh, time stamp T. The adversary is unbounded, okay, he knows the entire history. And the main problem here is that the adversary might learn some of the randomness that was chosen and used by the, uh, by the streaming algorithm. In particular, if the streaming algorithm chooses some pairwise hash or something like that, the adversary might learn this hash and then we don't have any further guarantees. Are known algorithms already robust? So I might have hinted that not, but at least some are. So the deterministic streaming algorithms are robust, okay? There's no randomness there. However, in many cases, uh, these, are, uh, these algorithms uh, to, to have small space, they must be randomized. Just an example, there's this function F2 that uh, if you wanna compute it with a randomized algorithm, you can do it with very small memory, okay? So this is a very small thing of epsilon as some constant. And if you have a deterministic algorithm, then you actually, there's no uh, non-trivial algorithm for it. And in a follow-up work with um, Omri uh, Ben Eliezer, Rajesh Jairam, David Woodruff and I, we, we showed that uh, this uh, famous uh, AMS algorithm, uh, the randomized one, it's actually not adversarially robust. Uh, some algorithms, it's very easy to see that they're clearly not adversarially robust. And actually for many other algorithms, I, I would even say for most of them, it's very hard to say if they are robust or not. So it's not an easy task to just look at an algorithm and, and see the existing ones. Uh, I already want to state one open problem. Is there some function which is easy in the classical setting, okay, the non-adaptive setting for streaming algorithms? but it's hard for a robust streaming algorithm, meaning that any uh, robust streaming algorithm would have to use like a linear number of, uh, linear amount of memory. Okay, so are these two uh, classes separate or are they the same? And I would even say that I have no guesses about what the, the answer should be. Let me see how I'm doing on time. Okay, so now I wanna talk about sampling and we'll connect it back to the adversarial streaming. So sampling, how many uniform samples do I need to take so that my sample is a good representative of my data? Um, so let's look at an example. I have data here which are real numbers. Okay, and these are in bold are my sample. And let's say that representative for, for uh, we'll have a random example, is the median of samples. Um, I, I want to epsilon approximate the median of the data. Okay, so my sample is a good representative if the median is kept within the sample up to some epsilon. Okay, so if this is the median, I'm allowed to answer any element uh, that is epsilon close in its order to the median. Um, okay, so this is quite an easy and well-studied problem. 
you can show that if you want a success probability of one minus delta and you have epsilon, so this is the amount of samples that you need. Uh, in particular, if epsilon and delta are constant, this is just a constant. So really a small number of samples uh, are enough to represent the median. Uh, and the proof is, is also very simple. It's just applying Chernoff, okay, looking, you have a binomial distribution, you sample at random, what's the probability that I sampled too much from this part as opposed to too much from this part? So the probabilities are, are very small. It's very simple to analyze. Um, so now let's go back to streaming. What if elements arrive in a stream? Okay, so elements arrive one by one like a streaming algorithm. This sampling procedure is just tailored for streaming. It's very easy and, and it works just the same way. Okay, we can think of the elements being uh, sorted. The sampling algorithm doesn't care about the order and we get the exact same analysis. So this is actually very useful. It gives us an algo a streaming algorithm to compute an approximate median. You just get a stream, you sample the elements with some small probability, okay, P that should be correspond to the size that we want. And, uh, and then you just compute the, the medium of the, of the elements that you saw. And this is a very general me method. You have a streaming algorithm, you wanna compute some function F, you first just obtain a small representative sample S of the stream. Uh, and then you output F on your sample. So it's a very generic method that helps compute many, many different functions F. And uh, well, I think I don't need to convince you that sampling is, a, is a, in general a good technique. What is the problem? The problem is this analysis assume that all the elements are chosen in advance. This is exactly what Chernoff telling us, like you fix the data and then what is the probability that I'm in the right part or right part of the left part. Uh, Chernoff doesn't work on samples in the adversarial model, okay? So now I'm gonna uh, uncompile the definitions of adversarial we had before to this specific uh, setting of sampling. So I'm gonna show you the, the, the model again with this specific sampling in mind. So we have the adversary. The adversary is gonna choose some element X1. Then our streaming algorithm is just the sampling algorithm, just samples X1 with probability P. And then it's, it uh, notifies the adversary if this element was sampled or not. The adversary gets this information and adaptively can choose the next element X2. And again, we notify the adversary if uh, this was sampled or not, and we continue this way. So this would be the adversarial model of, of sampling. Uh, and now we ask, what can we say about sampling in this process? How am I on time? Okay. So let's start with the bad news and I, I promise there is also uh, much good news. So the bad news first is this is actually not secure. Okay, so compared to the static case, uh, an adversary can use this additional power of adaptivity to completely fool us, okay? So let's just see the attack. So the attack is gonna be as follows. I'm looking at this interval zero one. The adversary is gonna have this interval in mind and he's gonna start by uh, giving uh, the number half. So half is gonna be the, the first number in the stream. Then we're gonna see if this number was sampled or not. So in this example, we have a green V, so this half was sampled. If half was sampled, we go to the left half. So we're gonna look at this uh, interval zero half, and we're gonna always submit the, the number uh, in the middle. So we submit one over four. One over four, for example, was not sampled. So we go to uh, this interval and uh, we submit this number. This number was also not sampled. So we go here and we submit this number and so on. And what you can see is that this is the stream of elements, okay? So these are the elements we submitted in the stream, but the sample contains uh, the largest two elements. And this, uh, you can continue this, this is true in general. We can submit a, a, a stream of N uh, numbers and the sample so-called that the algorithm is gonna take is gonna be the case largest number in the stream. So this is, by any definition, not a representative sample uh, uh, of the data. 
So this is the, the main bad news. Um, um, from this bad news, I want to go to the good news. So this attack is unrealistic in, uh, in different aspects. So one first aspect is that the bit complexity it needed was very large. So we, we split the, the interval to half at every iteration. So in order for this attack to work, what we needed is uh, really real numbers or at least exponential uh, precision. We needed the n bits of uh, uh, n, di uh, n digits after the point. And this is not exactly what we expect because the streaming algorithm, we want it anyway to use a very small amount of memory. So even just storing one number in the setting is not uh, feasible. It's already n bits of memory. Uh, but what we can show uh, from this lower bound is that if you have a universe of size u, so in my example, the universe was real number, so it was infinite. But if you have a discrete finite universe of size u and a string of length n, then you need roughly log u, a, a sample of size log u. And our upper bound says that uh, except this attack, uh, essentially you, there's no other attacks. This is the best possible that the adversary can do and he has to have such a large uh, domain. So if you have a sample of size log u plus log one over delta over epsilon squared, then this is sufficient for computing the median in the adversarial model. So without, if it was in the static model, we didn't have this log u. Okay, Chernoff said that you just need this log one over delta over epsilon squared. Uh, but in the adversarial model, you add the log u and then you're fine. So if u is infinite, then uh, this uh, theorem tells you nothing. But if u is finite and, and not too, uh, too large, uh, let's say polynomial in n, then actually you have a very small sample. Um, so this theorem was specifically for the median. I want to take a step back and, 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 uh, and say the theorem in more generality. Okay, so this was just an example. So I want to state a theorem saying that you take a sample from your data and the sample is going to be representative of all the data, even in the adversarial model. So I need to have a precise definition of what is a representative sample. So what we use is what's called a set system and an epsilon approximation. So I have a set system, which is just some universe U. I have a universe of elements and I have some uh, set of subsets R. Okay, so you could think of, for, a, for example, u being like numbers from one to, to m, and then uh, r could be, oops, uh, r could be all the intervals. Okay, so all the intervals of, of uh, form a, b. And then an epsilon approximation, so a sample is an epsilon approximation with respect to this specific set system, if, for every R in R, you have the same density in the sample versus the data. So you look at the fraction. So D is gonna be the fraction from the stream. So we have some stream X, we have some specific subset R, and we look what is the fraction of elements in X that are in R. So think of R to be, to be all even numbers. We're asking how much, how much even numbers did we see in the stream? And then we require that the number of even numbers in the sample is going to be more or less the same. So not the number, the fraction, of course. So we have 10% uh, even numbers. We want to have close to 10% even numbers also in the sample. But your set system could contain other stuff, not even numbers. Uh, in our example, it was like intervals. Uh, you can think why, because if you if you protect all the intervals with this definition, then the median, you can take the interval from one to the median and then from the median uh, to the maximum number and, and you see that the median uh, must be preserved. Uh, but you have many other uh, examples of set systems. You could care about the axis aligned rectangles, spheres uh, and so on. So depending on the application, you define some set system you, you program some set system of, of, of what you care and, and then you can prove that uh, the sample is representative. And, um, okay. So what is the good news in general? So for any set system, 
with VC dimension D, uh, which I didn't really define, what we show is that you need a sample size of D times log U plus the usual log one over delta over epsilon squared. And this suffices uh, so, so that your sample is an epsilon approximation of the stream in the adversarial model. And if you're asking what was known in the static model and in the static case, if there's not an adaptive adversary, then you just needed D plus the same usual suspects. So you, it, it was really a, a question of the VC dimension. So if we go back to the median case, uh, to get the median, the set system that we needed was all intervals and intervals have a VC dimension of two, okay? So that's why it was really just a constant. Uh, and what we show here is that the, the, the difference between the static and adversarial case is just this factor of log U. And it's not just something of the analysis. We showed the, through the attack that this uh, log U is actually necessary. Um, also, we have a version of this of what's called tracking theorem. So uh, if you want to be an epsilon approximation of the data at every timestamp, okay, not just like at the end, but you want at every timestamp, the sample is contained in an epsilon approximation of the, of the stream, uh, then you need just a slightly more a slightly more sample size. Uh, you could easily get a log n just by union bounding over all n timestamps, but we managed to get this down to log log n. Um, how am I on time? I just want to know, okay, I have like eight minutes minus questions. Okay. Three minutes minus questions. Three minutes minus questions, okay. <laughs> Um, so there are some applications of this. I, I guess I won't have much time. Uh, I'll try in uh, two minutes to just give some intuition about the proof. Um, so let's focus on an extremely simple case where the universe is just binary, it's zero, one, and the subset that I, of, of my set system is just the singletons, zero and one. And here the adversary, he, he, what is his goal? So for example, he wants the fraction of zeros to be much larger in the stream uh, than in the sample. Okay, he wants the stream to have many zeros, but the sample to have few zeros. And that's a uh, hard for him. Okay, you can think of at least the intuition because he could look at the sample and see that, oh, you're a bit under biased. Okay, you didn't sample enough. And then he wants to make this gap larger. So he says, okay, I'm gonna add more zeros to the stream so it will be larger. But then of course the sample might sample them and actually make it uh, smaller. Um, a bit more formally, and uh, I think I won't have time for the, for the proof, but uh, just in a high level, if you let xi be the number of zeros in the stream, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm in this particular case uh, of u and r, and uh, the adversary really, really wants a lot of zeros. So let's just xi be the number of zeros in the stream at time i, and let si be the number of zeros uh, in the sample at time i, and let yi be the discrepancy. So this is like the fraction uh, of, in the sample minus the fraction in the, in the stream. Okay, and I want to show that yn is small, smaller than epsilon with high probability. And what I cannot do is, this is not the static case. So these random variables are not independent. Okay, so I cannot use Chernobyl stuff like that. What they are is much more like a random walk. Like I have the discrepancy at some time i, and then the adversary can try to make this discrepancy a bit larger, or maybe he didn't succeed and it's smaller. So it's much closer than a random walk. Uh, so the idea is, of course, to use martingales. Um, okay, oh, I skipped something. So the idea is to use martingales, however, if you do the analysis, you see that they're actually not a martingale. So these y's are not a martingale. So instead, what we're gonna do is define these uh, x primes and s primes 
which are some fix of x and, and, and s. And what you're going to note is that x prime n at the end, at the last timestamp, x prime n is actually the, the, exactly the density uh, of xn. And s prime n is going to be very close to the density of sn. Okay, so this is because this is the number of zeros over n. So at the last point n, it's exactly the, the density. Okay, before it's, it's some weird value. And this is gonna be close because the memory, the number of sampled elements is not exactly n times p. It's, uh, it's gonna be very concentrated around n times p. And uh, what we then show that uh, this is a martingale, uh, I'm gonna skip the proof. And because it's a martingale and because uh, we showed that these are close, then you can show that since y prime is closer, is, is going to be close to epsilon, then y is, is also close to epsilon. Oh, I have some, uh, yeah. Uh, so you show it's a martingale, you bound the variance as not only the expectation that I skipped, you have to use some strong concentrations for martingale and essentially we're done for this uh, simple case. Uh, the full proof appears online. I think I have no time at all, right? I take a minute just to summarize. And in the meantime, if you have questions for Elon, you can post it. Um, so this was a bit quick, but we introduced, we talked about the robustness of sampling in the adversarial, uh, of sampling in the adversarial setting. Okay, so like uh, adversarial uh, version of Chernoff, I like to think about it. So what is the final conclusion? That sampling is robust, okay? However, you need a slightly larger sample complexity. Okay, so it does depend, uh, the size does matter. And uh, there are uh, two follow-up works, one that I mentioned and, and one even after, uh, doing something a bit different. They're talking about general compilers for streaming algorithms, where you can take a streaming algorithm that works in the classical setting and compile it to be one that works in the robust setting. Of course, these are not, General, they work on some cases, and uh, the, the general case is still uh, wide open. Okay. okay thank you. Thank you, Elon. So we have a question from Yossi. He's asking if there is a gap of log n between the upper bound and lower bound for the median. Yes. Yes, there is. And uh, yeah, and I suspect you can close it there. Actually, I also have a question. So can you extend the lower bound of uh, log u that you showed for the median for d log u for any uh, VC dimension d? I mean, do you know that the dependency must be d log u or maybe it can be d plus log u? Um, yeah, so, um, well, the, the question is what is the right dependency? Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, so actually uh, the, the, the answer I think it should not be even log u. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be some other measure called the, the little stone dimension. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is like a work in progress. Okay, thank you. Okay, any last chance? Last chance for asking Elon? Uh, okay, I think we are done. So thank you, Elon.